maintain some of these ideas. Now, what are those ideas? Here we have an education that takes the people of the area as sources of your learning. I'm so happy to learn that you know these visits, excursions, picnics, uh, uh, they, they are so important part of the education process, not just, a, not just textbooks. And amazingly, the textbooks were also teacher-driven. And I'm so happy that you are using science to do the similar philosophy, bring in similar philosophy, open textbooks. And here they had the teacher created textbooks. Now, the European knowledge system bringing a particular theory and philosophy about nature, about what is the best path for human development, and so on. Uh, is that the only body of knowledge that should come to every child? Or the knowledge should come from all over the world, from all traditions of the world, and above all, from your village, the people's knowledge in your own area. Now, this, this is the Netherhat model, the Santaniketan model. And the model is that we inherit global knowledge, not just European knowledge. We inherit global knowledge beginning from the knowledge system of our own area. But unfortunately, from the colonial times to the present day, particularly during the last 30 years of globalization, all the non-Western systems of knowledge are treated as inferior systems of knowledge. So the Netherhat model is a counter to that that it treats people's knowledge as as much important as the Western knowledge. This is first. And the BRICS countries, which have so great civilizations of India, China, and African civilizations, and the Mayan and other civilizations in Brazil and you know, Latin America. So also in Russia, unfortunately, we, we know very little about the Russian civilization. We only know the last 100 years or 150 years of Russian history. I was in Russia three weeks ago, and their museum, particularly the newly revived museum, tells us about the 3, 000, at least 3,000 years of history and even more. And I, did, I had no knowledge about Russian civilization. In other words, all parts of the world have civilizations. <laughs> Africa is not a dark continent. It also has civilization. So that notion of knowledge coming from all over the world, that is what has to be incorporated in our education. And the Netherhat model inspires us to do that. Second, all of you have talked about the dignity of labor combining manual and mental labor. Now, this is a wonderful concept. Unfortunately, that also has been demeaned. Manual labor has been demeaned. You know, we pay less wages to unskilled work, the minimum wage, and so on. You know, that whole system of wage differentiation, evaluation of labor in that way is the is the inheritance of the last 200 years European capitalist development which graded labor. What about my illiterate grandmother's expertise in making certain things out of the resources in our village? Not only she knew how to count and multiply and all those without, you know, uh, being literate, she had rich knowledge of nature, customs, <coughs> climate, technology of doing certain things, and so on. And our farmer, I mean, of course, everybody should be educated, and we uh, 
certainly will not allow illiteracy and so on. But we must respect the farmer's knowledge. We must respect the carpenter's knowledge. We must respect all forms of knowledge. And, uh, and this again, this Hantaniketan model, in, in Sriniketan, Tagore started the uh, handicrafts industry and handicrafts uh, and uh, the local agriculture uh, production process uh, as part of the schooling process. And it's very important, manual labor and mental labor. And it's not just manual and mental. Labor has many, many sensibilities which are integrated into our work. <coughs> labor is human <coughs> capacities, interaction with nature and the environment to serve society and nature. Well, economists call it add value. Labor is, you know, it adds value with resource and so forth. So, uh, mental manual labor, we, we abolish the distinction between that. And this is the model of education which has to promote that. Then, school and society, I have already mentioned. You know, it's true that Netherhat was chosen as a, you know, a, a Plato and a beautiful place. And uh, I can't wait. I must go and visit that place. <laughs> uh, but what is the concept of a boarding school that comes from the West? the doomed school or anywhere, isolated from the society. The whole concept is to create a gulf between society and school. And that gulf is further created today because we, we bring in these textbooks and curriculum and that is centrally imposed through state power. NCERT, SCERT, you know, so many systems backed by political power and administration and examination system geared towards that. Now, and then you add some extracurricular activities, social work and so on. Sorry. And you know the way the Netherhack model, uh, even though it was located in a beautiful place, it broke that barrier between society and school. And you know from Ivan Illich, Tagore to Ivan Illich to Darsa. Pradhanji. Uh, I'm so happy. And you said Srimanji, Mataji, and Pradhanji. I mean, the wonderful concepts. <laughs> and I now understand why some people call Ujjalji or Marindraji. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the, the, the you know, in the Bajrao Chhatrabas uh, context and in the Gandhian context, it is Bhai. Everybody is. Upper class ka bhi Bhai, niche class ka bhi Bhai. Ek busle ko Bhai. Bhai Bhai. Anyway, in Odia, Odisha, we call it Bhai and Oppa. Oppa is the women. Now, so school and society and the. Um, and that's where. Uh, the, the, the learning process is about learning about people, their history, their culture, their tradition, and their knowledge. Therefore, uh, when uh, the picnics and forest uh, part, and you know, the, some of the illustrations you gave were absolutely amazing. Uh, well, uh, I mean, carried away, so I, I want to be brief. Then, um, Education as a route to equality is so important. And the equality philosophy was practiced in, the, in this school. And you know, having the ashrams uh, and uh, you know, barri uh, the barriers of caste being broken, the caste and uh, class being broken, I mean, it's amazing. But what is the education system that we have promoted. We have some seven kinds of primary schools today. 
right to education, tried to intervene, but failed. You know, this whole campaign could not overcome the hierarchies of the schools. Um, and the way the language policy has been util used to promote this inequality uh, is, is absolutely uh, disgusting. We are so ashamed of it. <coughs> I mean, uh, let her have school, and that is the model I grew up with. I, uh, I have only a medium school I came through. Uh, and uh, in fact, I must tell you, um, when um, I was in my class 11 and I was going to college next year, uh, my uh, teachers told me that, you know, those English medium students who will come to study with you, they might be very good in spoken English, but their written English will be faulty. They might be good in English as a language, <laughs> they'll be weak in mathematics, <laughs> and so on. You know, we were given I mean, several such things. Uh, and gradually, we, and we were told to learn English as a language. In class uh, eight, I had an English teacher, Muhammad Muslim, my headmaster, very famous headmaster in Odisha. Uh, my first correction of my uh, pronunciation of F, he made. Uh, he said, it's not father, it's father, <laughs> you know, that kind of. Uh, and uh, then, then you discern that, you know, we Bengalis and Odias, you know, what mistakes we commit, commit uh, you know, for us, all sahs are dantesas. For the Bengalis, all sahs are talabasas. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, and he made me conscious of that. As a result of which, when I learned Chinese, I could pronounce Chinese with all the distinct uh, accents because of that training in my school. Uh, the point I was making is that English, when we learn as a language with the techniques, knowing about grammar, about pronunciation, then we could pick up. And, um, you know, there is an in, uh, Indian English that we pick up and we manage quite well. Uh, but we also maintained our grip over our language, which became our main instrument of learning, communication, thinking, uh, everything. And writing. This is very important. I'm so sorry that my proficiency in Hindi is uh, not as good. I could speak in Odia, <laughs> but not in Hindi, and I'm speaking in English. So the uh, the mushrooming of English medium schools, uh, um, very poor standard English medium nurseries, they are devastating our education system. And until and unless we do. <coughs> Other than medium education, this will be a. This is actually damaging the creative capacity of every Indian now. So just imagine in another 30, 40 years, we'll have, we'll, we'll have procured, we'll have produced, uh, um, I mean, procured the. Uh, the uh, I mean, I'm, I'm very upset about it. I was choosing a word which I will not use. Uh, those tools which we can never master because, you know, the uh, Indian English literature has a quality which is different from the English English literature or American English literature and so on. Um, finally, uh, the school is a school for democracy, for learning, for participation, for treating each other equally and looking at the world as a democratic world, not a world in which some people govern others. Not, not one of subjects and rulers, rather participant, a 
participatory system of equals, self-governing system. And, uh, you know, when the teacher uh, uh, participates in teaching uh, and doing the manual labor in the Netherhut school, uh, that sense of equality and dignity of labor. So the democracy, school as the school of democracy, that is what an ashram is all about. Uh, therefore, friends, <coughs> uh, the model that we are talking about, we have to revive. Today, I feel so reassured that there are people. You know, the uh, the other day I met some people who are, who are products of the Aravinda School of Education. Integral education, and this Bajirao Chhatravas products, because they are there only for uh, six years, uh, but you know the class, uh, I think one to six, and then six to eight, uh, something like that, eight years, and uh, thereafter they can't manage in in Anugur Bajirao Chhatravas. But those who grow up, no matter where they are. You will see the Netarhat stand. I can see you know, how proud you people are. And you carry those values. And Manindra's analysis of those uh, the internet uh, group, Netarhatians group, it is so reassuring. And I, th I think one message which the uh, every teacher has given us The full sloka I just took out today. Tatvidhi pranipate na pariprasne na sevaya upadekshanti te gyanam gyanina tattu darsina. You know, in the commentaries, you'll find a different meaning from what I am giving. The commentaries say that. Uh, <coughs> Of course, this may still be not enough. That is good. Uh, you, uh, you understand that with pranipatana, with paying respect to the teacher, pariprastana uh, seva. You serve the guru by pariprastana, by questioning. Some commentaries say you uh, serve the guru and also politely ask some, in a respectful way, some simple questions. <coughs> Sarala uh, No, I, th I think the form of service to the guru is to <coughs> To question the guru because the guru then gets vindicated that he or she has equipped you with tools so that you have captured the best of the tools from the guru and you can be more creative than the guru. A guru is one who feels overwhelmed that his or her sisters have gone beyond that real. Because the second one is very clear. Upadekshanti te gyanam gyanina tattva darsina. That means, <coughs> then the guru, when you ask the question, the guru is excited. Guru then upadekshanti gives the advice or gives the reply and gives the, gives the knowledge. But that knowledge takes him deeper. He is not only an information giver. Dr. Rajaram not only is information giver, but creative thinker. Goi Tattva Darsini. Tattva Darsina means those who go deep into the theories and philosophies and Buddha Tattvas. In other words, the philosophical depth is discovered. And that 
process goes on and on. And I think our best tribute to Jivannath Darji, Pradhanji, today would be to expand that realm of creative experience, expand the world of creative possibilities, and make education a school of democracy, equality, beauty, and creative self. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your brilliant lecture. Now I would like to request Mr. Amarnath Darji to come on stage and present the memento to Professor Mohan.